Hi there, Doug Stimulant with IT Creations. So you saw, or maybe you saw, a review of the Dell EMC PowerEdge R6525 server a few weeks back, supporting dual second generation AMD EPIC processors and a 1U chassis. Maybe check it out now. Today we'll be taking a look at the Dell EMC PowerEdge R7515 server supporting up to 26 drive bays and a 2U chassis with a single second generation AMD EPIC processor. These single processor AMD systems have been making a big splash. Why? Because with the high core counts on these platforms, they can do as good or better than a two CPU system at a lower cost. Let's take a look. What I didn't mention in that R6525 video is that there are five new Dell systems specifically designed to take advantage of the new features on the second generation AMD Epic processors, codename Rome. There's our new unit we're reviewing today, the R7515, plus another single socket 1U version, the R6515 and three two socket versions, the R7525, the R6525, we already reviewed that one and you can see it here, plus there's a new one in this family, a dual socket cloud server, the C6525 that hopefully we'll be reviewing in a few weeks. Let's take a quick look at the stats on those second generation AMD EPIC processors. At the top of the line, you're getting twice the core count at 64 cores and 128 threads compared to 32 cores max and 64 threads on the Gen 1 version EPIC processors. Memory is 20% faster, plus a 50% increase in performance over the previous generation R7415 server, which we reviewed here. They look pretty much the same. I mean, it's got a new processor. How about some AMD green racing stripes or something to match the new engine? Just a suggestion. You still have the choice for either a security bezel on the front or one with an integrated control panel. Once you remove the bezel, there are several possible storage configurations to choose from. There's a 24 bay 2.5 inch drive chassis and then there's an 8 bay 3.5 inch bay system like the one we have here and a 12 bay 3.5 inch drive chassis configuration. Optionally, you can put two more 2.5 inch SATA or SAS drives in back. The system will support SAS, SATA and NVMe drives, but that last one only on the 24 bay chassis with the universal backplane. The other option is a SAS SATA capable backplane and is for the 3.5 inch drive configuration. By the way, IT Creations is an essential business and we will be open during this COVID-19 crisis to support your business. Are you interested in this system? Because if you are, then for a limited time, you can save up to $500 off assisted listed on our site at $5,000 or more. Just click that link to see pricing and when you're ready to make a purchase, just mention this video. It seems like a great day for lawn darts. Wait, what? The left side control panel has an information button with telltale lights to the side indicating drive status, temperature, electrical, memory, and a PCI indicator. You know, just like the other R6525 I reviewed. You also have the option for a quick sync button right below the info button for at chassis management of the system using either a smartphone or tablet. On the right side of the system is another control panel with a power on button, two USB ports, a mini USB-C port, and a VGA port. The mini USB-C port provides direct access to the integrated Dell remote access controller, which in this case would be used for at chassis management of the system using a crash card. I suppose if you need to enter a lot of information, it'd be easier using a keyboard and if you're just looking for status and assets, then maybe the quick sync option. Nice that you have two options right at the chassis. I mean in front anyways. Only the 8-bay chassis will support an optional optical device. You also get remote management of the system through the integrated Dell Remote Management Controller with Lifecycle Controller, or iDRAC with Lifecycle Controller. Do you think it's redundant with controller in both of those names? I mean, they could have called it the integrated Dell Remote Access Controller with Lifecycle Administrator. I think that sounds better, don't you? Where was I? Oh yeah, <laughs> for even more granular control over the system and compatibility with third-party platforms, there's OpenManage Enterprise, which is standard on the system. It also features the OpenManage Enterprise Power Manager to make sure you're not overspending on power in the data center. There are also several security features, operating systems, and hypervisors to choose from. On the back of the system, starting on the far left, a system identification button, system status indicator cable port, VGA port, serial port, dedicated iDRAC port for remote management of the system, should I stop here? I mean, you've already seen this stuff, right? Ha, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Next, there's two RJ45 one gigabit ethernet ports. Right in the middle are the PCI expansion card slots with a slot on the bottom for the optional compute project LAN on motherboard riser ethernet port. The LOM card is optional, but again, if you don't want to use up your PCI ports, then there are quite a few to choose from, from different connection speeds to the number of connection ports. Oh, and you know, before we move on, I just wanted to say that I thought it was odd when you, and I'm talking to you, Dell, decided to switch from calling your network daughter card or NDC a LOM card in the previous generation set of documents for the first AMD platforms. 
Lom card is used for most of these new ones too, only to have you resurrect the term NDC on the R7515 datasheet, and then call it a Lom card in the technical guide. Confusing? Not at all. I mean, I've called your support line. Lastly, dual PSU slots for redundancy. With this system, we're running a 750 watt PSU, but again, there are more options depending on how the system will be outfitted. You're definitely gonna need that 1100 watt PSU if you'll be installing multiple GPUs, as this system will support up to four total. With the cover panel off, you can see our single second generation AMD Epic processor with heatsink. As our 7502P processor has 32 cores and eight memory module slots to either side of the socket, you can see the need for some effective cooling. And that bank of six high performance fans pulls in fresh air from the front and over those memory modules and CPU heatsink, and then out the back. I just like seeing this animation. This board will support one of AMD's Epic Gen 2 64 core processors or the 32 core processor we have here, which has a TDP of 180 watts. And just like AMD's other second generation Epic processor lineup, it supports eight memory channels at up to 3200 megahertz. And with 16 slots total, that means two memory modules per channel for a maximum of two terabytes of memory using 3DS load reduced memory modules or up to one terabyte using registered DDR4 modules. This system is currently loaded with 16 32 gigabit memory modules for 512 gigabytes of memory total. The back plane on this chassis supports SAS and SATA drives with hot plug connections. SATA and NVMe drives are supported natively using the integrated S150 software RAID for SATA, but NVMe is only supported on the 2.5 inch chassis. SAS will require an HD RAID controller, and again, you have several to choose from. I mean, we just did the R6525 supporting dual AMD second generation epics, and I pointed out all those new HD controllers with the five on the end. Let's not dwell on that. Dell lists all of the kind of older controllers on this spec sheet for this model, including the H840 for external HDs. The R7515 also has a dedicated port for a mini perk controller with its very own mini perk air shroud for SAS implementations or if you need more control over your storage. Talking about those PCI lanes, with AMD you get 128 PCI lanes to work with. And again, the number of slots does depend on which risers you install. But you get up to four PCI by 16 lanes. Two of those by 16 slots are PCI 3.0 and the other two are PCI 4.0 for future hardware support. You can also install a maximum of two faster network controller cards that can access an impressive by 16 lane in each slot for rapid data transfers and no bottlenecks. Using all PCI slots, you can install up to four NVIDIA T4 single wide GPUs for dense virtual desktop implementations or a single full height field programmable gate array. That can be assigned more specific functionality. The system does not have any integrated M.2 slots on the motherboard, but as an option, you can install a boot optimized storage subsystem or BOSS featuring dual M.2 drives that can be used to support your OS with redundancy. Let's not forget the micro SD card module that has a dedicated by four port on the system board so you don't use up any of those by 16 PCI slots. This module features dual micro SD cards on one side and a V flash card on the other for iDRAC storage. 20% faster memory, 100% greater core count, GPU accelerators, NVMe and advanced connectivity. It lowers customers equipment costs provides more storage capacity for software-defined storage and data analytics, plus virtualization. It offers a 51% increase in performance compared to the previous generation, and that would be the R7415. There's a lot of features to love about the Dell EMC PowerEdge R7515 server. And with a single socket, you can reduce your licensing fees for certain applications, which may be based on a per CPU socket licensing model. Not sure what the next system will be given this coronavirus crisis, but it's always a surprise for me too. If you like our videos, hit that subscribe button and the like button too. If you have a question, post it in the comments section below. Remember, IT Creations carries this server and many other servers, workstations, and components. If you're looking for IT equipment, check out our website. And if you don't see what you're looking for, give us a call. Chances are we have that too. I'm Doug Stuman with IT Creations, and thanks for watching. Stay safe and take care.